If there's one thing that I can say I'm very proud of when it comes to the channel, it's consistency. And when it comes to consistency, I really want to thank the people who helped make it happen. Brandon, Josiah especially, for being constant, well, constants on this channel. And especially in this Reset Timber series, the idea of having either of them, but in this case, Brandon, to read over the story and be here to convey their his takeaway, just like Josiah has before and will next week, it's just, it's invaluable and appreciated. So, after the ad read and after the open rolls, Brandon will be here and we will talk about live action role playing ace whether it's your first time here or you're a regular here at mr super oz i just want to thank you for tuning in to the channel it exists because i oz from the channel mr super oz i wrote a 68 page graphic novel called everlasting survivors Volume 1 is called All Day Long. If you follow the link in the description of this video, you can get yourself hats, shirts, posters, all kinds of fun things. But most importantly, you can get the story itself. And the more people that pick up the story, the greater the chances are that there can be continued adventures with these heroes. If you could, give it a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment. Enjoy. Brandon, thank you for continuing on this mission of revealing upcoming characters from Gamble Comics to the viewer or the subscriber or the whatever you you all want to call it. It's just it's advantageous to have somebody, or in this case, a couple of somebodies, who who I can rely on and trust to help me with this process. And so, yeah, thank you for being a part of this. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, it's it's funny. So this character that we're we're talking about today, live action role playing Ace, was originally a character that I didn't really even have any feelings toward. I only created an archer because everybody's got one. You know, Marvel's got Hawkeye. DC's got Green Arrow and, you know, other colorful characters with bow and arrows, mm -hmm. you know, Red Arrow, Speedy at one point. <laughs> uh, what was it? Arsenal, another name for uh, the same character, basically, but throughout his evolution, or when he's a clone, mm -hmm. <laughs> none of that part really matters. And even Valiant's uh, comics has an archer named Archer, who teams up with a guy named Armstrong, or whatever his buddies with and so I was at first the the character kind of came from a place of not necessarily need but almost it's like if, if there's an expectation in my mind and so with that I tried to find a different in for the character because you know obviously I don't want and also don't have experience in being a billionaire. So there's no point in trying to write the Oliver Queen story. I don't I don't have a perspective when it comes to being from money, mm -hmm. right? So, like, I, I, not only do I not want it because it's been done, but I don't know how to do it. Like, how, how do I... We gotta make something interesting. Yeah. yeah. How do I uh, tell this story that I know nothing about? Mm -hmm. uh, similarly, I'm... I'm not saying I dislike Clint Barton or Hawkeye, but I, I, I find it skeptical to think that this, this secret agent man uses a bow and arrow effectively, especially given that his his buddy, Black Widow, mm -hmm. 
uh, uses a gun, guns, or yeah. multiple guns, yeah, exactly. And wasn't he like a circus? Wasn't he like... Oh, yeah, the, the definitely uh, backstory-wise, yeah. he, he has circus stuff there. But, you know, again, when I think of circus, I think of Dick Grayson and mm -hmm. Flying Grayson's not so much uh, government agent. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so these are things that I can't really grasp or relate to. And so, so I was trying to find a way to make the the Gamble Comics world Archer somebody I could I could figure out like well how how is it that you and I have anything in common in the character so Mac who is or Macarius whatever uh, the Archer when we first meet him he's he's young he's being bullied in school and it's it's actually one of the funnier things about the writing process to me is I, well that and I don't know, just off the top of my head, I'm not like, hmm, what's a great way to bully somebody? So I start looking up what would be an insult toward a Puerto Rican. Mm -hmm. Because I was like, I don't know. And the only thing that kept coming up and up is... Uh, referring to them in or by the wrong place of origin, and so uh, a bully in in school keeps calling him Mexican, and 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 it's not where he's from. He's Puerto Rican, right? Uh, in origin, I mean. And I just uh, I found that amusing, and also interesting, obviously. So, and I don't consider it a big giveaway because it happens so early in the story, and. Uh, one thing about this particular uh, first issue is I think, if I'm not mistaken, it does the most time jumping mm -hmm. of any story I've written so far. Like, obviously, Everlasting Survivors, my first graphic novel that was put out by Gamble Comics, happens throughout one day. It's literally called All Day Long for that purpose. And most other stories that I've written so far they <laughs> they happen tightly but this I hit high points throughout his life like I said the, the being bullied uh, as it goes forward he comes together and, and becomes close with the bully because while I'm, I won't say that I ever got close with bullies we <laughs> they never stayed an enemy because right. I, I mean, personally, I don't feel like enemy is even a good way of looking Adversary. at it. Adversary. Adversary, there we go. <laughs> because, I don't know, it was weird. The way that my birthday fell, even though I was a year younger than my sister, we, we started and stayed in the same grade because of when my birthday fell and when school began. And so I was always smaller, which is now... Extra yeah, weird because now I'm now bigger than most everybody, <laughs> or or not every everybody, but a lot of people that yeah. I'm around. And so, when I was starting school, I was smaller, and so I was able to bring that element into the story as a way to relate, you know, and understand this character. And so, I I like I said, I enjoyed. <laughs> And this is a weird thing to say. I enjoyed being able to not just pick on a character, but show him overcoming the bullying. Mm -hmm. And it's funny, it's actually our mutual friend Ahmed's, uh, a part of his life, a story that when we were talking about being bullied or, or having that adversarial relationship in schools, a piece of his experience got married into a piece of my experience which you know brought this character his life experience and I, I just love being able to do that in storytelling is bringing different elements together mm -hmm. but um what ended up happening when the bully gets put in his place we'll put it that way uh, they both get in trouble because that's what generally happens. generally how it plays out. And and while they're both uh, facing their sentence, uh, the 
the what's about to become former bully becomes friends with the uh, former bullied, and they they go on a, a field trip in school to a Renaissance festival, which I don't know or fair, whatever yes, the cor- cor- yeah whatever the correct terminology is. Um, but I don't know if you had that happen when you were in school, but I did, and I just remember. When I went to the, not the bullying, and then going, but, although, technically, that is how it played out. (laughs) Uh, It's just, I wasn't friends with the bully when Mm -hmm. we went, but my point was, I don't know if, because, you know, me and you were from different parts of the state, I don't know if they, everybody made that a, a staple, if you will. Yeah, well, for, yeah, me, yes, going to the Renaissance. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, me too. Yeah. Which is very cool. Again, because I just didn't know, given the the distance between where we were raised. Mm. But when I went, I was broke. I was super broke, you know, being a kid and from nowhere. But, like, I I saw all these cool things, you know, shields and swords and all these just cool... Maidens. Well, yeah, that too. (laughs) Um, But what I mean is things I want... All right, I got to play into yeah. things I wanted to bring home with me yeah. is what I was going to say, which now makes your statement yeah. even funnier. Um, and so I, I can I can still envision or remember because like I got this uh, Osborne Family Crest tattoo and I was like, man, that would be great on a shield, uh, you know, especially for sword play and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's irrelevant for the story, but it's just it's relevant for real life. And so taking the real life experience of enjoying this step back in time really helped uh, taking a step back, remembering this really helped bring the joy to these two characters as they are going to this uh, place and and being uh, en- enamored by it led to them being engrossed in it because we we time jump after their their visit and so after they finish school they they just join it they're like hey if you can't beat them join them and they they become a part of it and that's where the the ace portion of the 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 title comes in because mac is so like i said enthralled with it all that he and oh it's funny so this part actually comes from the heath ledger movie a knight's tale Mm -hmm. Because, uh, you know, I watched it for the channel, and it really helped heighten my enjoyment of these this, this other time. Now, obviously, it is playing it out as if he's there, whereas this story is they're pretending like they're at, you know, in a different time. Yeah. But watching it and having a good time with it is what made me think, oh, wow, okay, so he doesn't need to only exclusively be an archer, like... There are so many other things that happened at this event that I was like, oh, he can be good at just multiple things, which then also separates him from the pack, if you will, of of archers. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. And I, I, I really enjoy trying to, while yes, have familiarity to the known also have that separation, that that setting apart to... That way, because, like, for instance, it's a common, especially on the internet, age, but even before that, I guarantee that it was happening, it's common for people to say, oh, that's Marvel's Superman with so many characters, Mm -hmm. Hyperion, uh, Gladiator, so forth and so on, anybody, uh, Blue Marvel, anybody with... Flight and super strength, and you know, the, also a pseudo having a little bit of the appearance, right? Mm-hmm. And then subsequently, there's also lots of times when they'll say, "Oh, that's Marvel's Batman." Yeah. When it comes to Moon Knight or Daredevil or so forth and so on, um, Night Thrasher. It's like, in 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 none of these cases are any of them precisely Batman or, you know vice versa where it's like you're, you're not actually this person or actually that person it's just there are similarities mm-hmm. and that's that's one of the things that I really like to try and do is yes you can see he is an archer like primarily you can see the the the, the quiver and the, the arrows and the quill or the, the the 
all the all the arrow stuff, right? Yeah, all the gadgets and gadgets. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but but you know he's not that exclusively. Mm -hmm. And so and it goes even further than that when when we time jump once again because his his family primarily his father is disappointed that he's devoting so much of his time and effort to this in his mind fantasy land stuff and so he uh, Mac goes to college and gets a degree because you know that's what parents expect that's what society expects right and so and so it's a way to show off not just that he's skilled at this other world or prior time stuff but he's also he also excels in a field of the now mm -hmm. when he's when he's also uh i think it's psychiatry is the talking one not so much the giving the pill one right Cur no psychology that's the one, the talking I, one that's what, what, yeah, really exactly, good, thank you yeah. i always get those two mixed up uh, but it's easy. If they're trying to give you pills, I'm like, nah, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. And if they ain't, then I'm like, hey, let's let's have a conversation. But that's what I meant to say in the the, the moment. But <laughs> I just I don't. My point is, I like to show that the characters within the world have layers. <laughs> Shrek and Donkey. <laughs> um, but. Yeah, and, and aren't just the gimmick that they are using, mm -hmm. right? And I'm not saying Oliver or Clint are just the gimmick and that they don't have layers, but my point is I also don't want my characters to be carbon copies of what people recognize. Right. Was there any particular takeaway or thing that you that jumped out to you within the story? Uh, yeah, I like the family dynamic. Oh, thanks. Um. Oh yeah, there's a sister. Exactly. Also I was gonna say I love the the sister. It's funny. So I actually gave the brother sister dynamic kind of the inverse of me and my sister dynamic. Mm. So I realistically am the more sarcastic one of the two of us, and I gave my sarcastic nature to the sister in this story, and and gave the brother the more serious tones to the, uh, the getting together you know right. the, their, of their relationship and I just thought that was a fun way of looking at it because like the sister when when Max getting bullied she's like uh, she's smart aleck to him before they go to school and's like oh you're not gonna die today yeah, and, then, yeah. <laughs> and then later on she's like oh maybe, maybe today is the day <laughs> and so yeah I just uh, yeah uh, thank you for yeah. that is my point and yeah I, I also I like working in a place where I understand because like the video that's going out next week with Josiah is that character that we're talking about uh, Josephus he has two brothers and I have zero brothers and I have no personal actual anecdotes to use but what I did was I used cousins who are brothers and their their dynamic and kind of pasted it onto oh, okay. the the characters because it's like it's the best it's the best I got to use mm -hmm. was just that uh, close but not super close relationship. Oh, okay, that's cool. Yeah, and so I don't know. It's just it's fun doing that and like I don't know if this I don't know if this stood out to you in the story, but I have a bad habit. Of, of having distant fathers. I mean, they might be present, but they're not gonna be. Uh, they're not gonna be. They're not gonna be Bobbies. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and I actually do need to get. Uh, get past that, but it's just, it's my experience, and so it comes up. Mm -hmm. Cause like, when I when I worked on Dom's origin story, obviously he. He had a, a strained relationship. And now here in Max family dynamic, it's not that his father is bad or yeah, but he's or, emotionally Yeah, he's yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, relationally emotionally distant. Absolutely. Yeah. And and he's so focused on what he believes is correct mm -hmm. that there's no other correct uh, right answer. Right. And that in and of itself can be challenging to have a relationship with is when there's 
there's no give and take. Mm -hmm. And so, I don't know, I don't know, I just, it's just something I noticed, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I noticed um, that. Yeah. yeah. I just, I just mean about myself. I mean, oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> like I, I make that, um, I've, I've had that occur now twice and I was like, Oh, okay. Let's not, let's not do it a third or fourth time. Uh, and so while Dom and his father, Oscar's relationship is different than Mac and his father's, uh, whenever I catch myself with patterns, I'm like, that uh, cannot persist. Right. <laughs> um, and and the the upside was they're not mirror images they're just similarities yeah like the Marvel and the Daddy issues oh yeah you know, absolutely that's why Moon Knight was so refreshing because it was mommy issues yes <laughs> <laughs> well and and that's the thing is uh, you know if you if you uh, you and your buddy have moms with the same name you can definitely Martha <laughs> <laughs> you can definitely have big, big times going no, on that's your name that's my mom's name we're best friends now. yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness but yeah so like I said what what are your overall feelings on the first 17 pages of the story and are you looking forward to seeing it continue? Oh yeah looking forward to seeing it continue like I said I like the family dynamic but also like that uh, no matter where you are in life, you're always going to have some sort of struggles. Oh, yeah. Maybe not necessarily a bully, but like later on when he goes to college, you yes. know, the professor is a little bit of, you know, of a jerk. And Absolutely. you're like, oh, so you're going to have to learn how to navigate that. And I always like, because, you know, it's not going to be hunky-dory in life. But wherever you go, there's probably going to be one person. Absolutely. That you're like, well, it's funny. And to me, the, even though the bully becomes a friend... He isn't exactly uh, conducive to the best choices being made. Even while he's on the side of the 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 hero, he also is kind of his his wild side, if you will. He's mm -hmm. like, oh, let's let's take this road trip. Let's do this uh, this oh, yeah. frivolous, un uh, un uh, not mature thing, but we're gonna have a good time with it, mm -hmm. and so. Yeah, that's that's one thing I really like about the the bully turned friend is that even when he's on the side of the the good guy, he's not exactly helping him make good decisions. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Which you know sometimes you've got friends. I don't know. I at least have had friends like that where it's like, hey, uh, would you like to make some bad decisions? Yeah, I was like, that does sound like yeah, a good sometimes idea. Sometimes you need those type of friends <laughs> too. Right. You're like, yeah, okay, I got to do something to take the edge off. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> thank you for. Thank you for joining me. You're Thank welcome. you for helping me to put these stories and out there into the world to let everybody know what is to come. You know, I, it's just invaluable to have people that you can rely on. And so I thank you. Oh, you're welcome.